hello premium queen welcome back to my channel today and if today is your first time this is me saying thank you for joining us today in one of my previous videos i shared with you my goals and how i wanted to achieve them in 12 weeks today i literally will be sharing my report card with you as to how far i've gone with my goals today is the 15th of february even though you will be watching the video later but today is exactly 12 weeks from the 22nd or 23rd of november when i started this 12 week journey join me and let's see how far we've gone I've shared with us in the previous videos in the productivity series how um, you create your master action list, your vision board, and all of those things towards achieving your goals, which is exactly what I've done. And in the week one, which ran from 23rd of November to 30th of December 2022, um, I wrote down the things that I achieved just as a way of checking myself and knowing am I productive towards my goals or am I just being active without exactly, you know, hitting the mark. So number one, um, I wrote down, called the lawyer with the brief on the debt repayment plans for my business. Now, even though this wasn't exactly part of my top three goals, the reason this is as important is that um, if you remember also, and I'm going to share that, you know, in the description box when I was sharing my entrepreneurial journey and how scaling too fast, you know, nearly cost the business to fail. I shared how we had taken money from investors and we exactly couldn't repay because of COVID and all of that. But not to bore you, the link will be in the description box. It meant that for us to make progress, right, we needed to communicate with our investors, you know, with the plans and all of those interesting things. And the one single goal for that was who was going to anchor this process and it was going to be a legal firm. And the reason for me choosing a legal firm was simple, to manage the communication professionally and excellently so that as a company based on integrity, we will be communicating in clear terms our desires, right, on how to repay this thing. So even though this was not listed in my top three goals, it was important to me. And I made sure that that happened in the first one week. Number two, I wrote down, I said 95% um, completed on the debt Excel sheet compilation. My goodness, I hate admin work with everything inside of me. Like, if you literally ask me to write you a letter or a proposal right now, it can take me the next one year. So when I say 95% completed on debt Excel sheet compilation, it was me saying, Ichama, well done, keep going, you can do this. And then of course, for um, one of my goals, which was the debt funding from Bank of Industry, I then put number three that I had received because it was one of the things on my master action list, right? I had gone ahead and received the Bank of Industry checklist. Number four, I have gone ahead and called approved Bank of Industry consultant. Number five, and gone ahead and you know completed asset valuation which was one of the things needed by bank of industry so all of that was done in week one um, number six met with an approved um, bank of industry auditor and forwarded a part of the preliminary documents number seven got in contact with the corporate affairs commission legal guy and received the checklist why was this important it was one of the things that i have put in the master action list uh, for bank of industry there were a few documents they need like your um annual company annual tax returns and all of those interesting things you know and i needed to get someone to get this done you know um updating our documents with the corporate affairs commissions and all of that so within that first week of 23rd of november to 30th of december i also had gotten in, in contact with the um legal person that would handle that and receive the checklist and that's why i had that you know as what i achieved the number eight i then also got initial checklist re-taxation that's what i put there um with the bank of industry and of course you know as a business owner you need to file your taxes on time and all that so for me within that first week was you know i got the initial checklist so that was check number nine for me also was um 97 percent you know completion with 2022 accounts review ending august 2022 at the time i was doing this this was 23rd of november and um, what we had sent to our accountants our external accountants 
you know, was our accounts ending August 2022. So this was me saying that by this first week, I was 97% done with our profit and loss accounts, with our balance sheets, with our, our cash flow as well. Um, ending that period so you know if i have to score myself overall i think i did you know considerably well towards achieving my goals in 12 weeks so pardon me apparently i made a mistake when i was saying i'm um, 23rd of november to 30th of december it was uh, off to be my week one it was actually 23rd of november to 30th of november but i had written 30th of december Sorry about that. So the week two, which is the 1st of December till the 7th of December, what I then recorded was the fact that I uploaded um, shots on YouTube. Yeah, that was activity for me <laughs> towards my YouTube goal. So check. And then I also had gone ahead and opened a TikTok account. My goodness. And uploaded those shots on TikTok. Right. So I checked that as well. I still continued with accounts review. So I put that as number two. Number three, I met um, with a very strategic person for my business. I put that meeting there. It was productive. Um, then number four, I sent out letter of engagement and had completed this debt profile schedule and sent it to legal. Like my goodness, that, that must be the most productive thing I had done in that week, you know? And then um, by number five, received all director's documents um, because for the legal things that needed to be done at corporate affairs commission we needed our directors to send in some documents and update the documents so i received all of those um documents i sent it to corporate affairs commission interestingly even though you know my major goal was ra um, raising debt funding from bank of industry i always would say the vision is the same but the strategies will change don't stay fixated on the how be flexible with your how but maybe be a bit rigid with what you're trying to achieve so as much as i was talking to bank of industry the truth is i was talking to two other commercial banks what is important is hitting my goal so um the two other commercial banks i had to of course then open an account so with my number five also was that i received all the director documents and then sent to these two banks that i wanted to establish relationship with so that was, that was my number five um number six i then engaged and paid you know the legal firm for the csc document because that became like the number one thing um, i needed it for um the corporate office commission i needed it also then for um the bank opening and all of those things so i engaged and paid by week two number seven for me i reviewed <laughs> video one and two of the youtube videos and extracted the shots you know even though i had said i uploaded shots by number one but by by number eight i'm saying i actually had to review the videos the youtube videos and extracted the shots it was work and it was work i was doing towards you know growing my youtube subscribers so that made it to my list and then by number nine i reviewed um our bank statement for from july to november of 2022 if you remember by week one I was 97% done with um, our reviewing our accounts up until August 2022. So what I then needed to do was to send accounts, um, our bank statement, you know, to, to for review and all of that up until November 2022, because this was the 1st of December to the 7th of December. So this is where I was in week two and I was making progress. Um, hopefully you can still score me in the comments section as to how much progress you think I'm making. I didn't then, um, you know, start to pen down what I had achieved week three, four, or all the way to seven, um, simply because I was still making sure I was doing things on my action list and making progress. So by week eight, I decided to check in with myself, which was the 18th of January, you know, at this time, I, I needed to check in with my progress, you know, so um, the first thing I have here is that CAC documentation completed. Kaching. <laughs> and then the two banks that I wanted to um, establish relationship with, I said account opened with the two banks. Check. And this is by week eight. Of course, valuation completed, which was completed in week one or two, had to go in here. Check. Um, then by this time, um, management accounts for 2021, I said 85% ready because we still had something pending. Um, 2022 management accounts, I said 80% ready. And then I had contacted auditor, of course. So this, you know, by the end of week eight, I had contacted tax person, which I had shared, you know, in my week one and two. I had contacted the approved um, bank of industry consultant. So that was check. 
And then what I then was doing between week three and up until week seven, to be honest, I, I don't know exactly when, was this is a new year. And as a business owner, I am so focused right now on profitability in business. So it meant that one key thing for me was looking at our profit and loss projections for 2023 and then also our cash flow. I remember so well, I think it was in video four of my entrepreneurial journey. I had shared about how, you know, I realized that cash flow is key. Um, we would always say that cash is king in business, but I then found out that cash flow is what is key. You want to make sure that you're positively earning money to meet up with your bills and deadlines. If you don't have that, you're going to be in debt like, you know, like I found my business and myself. So I focused on that. It was quite tedious work for us. But then I put it here that 2023 profit and loss and cash flow projections ready. And the next one for me was that I consistently posted videos weekly on YouTube. My goodness, that feels like, ah. <laughs> but then I did it. And then by, by the same week eight, I said, I went live on Instagram after a two years hiatus. <laughs> I hadn't been on Instagram for two years. I'd been off social media. And I remember that I had shared this in my entrepreneurial journey as to why um, these were triggers for my mental health, you know, um, with the whole COVID um, issues. And that's not for us to talk about here today. So my going back on Instagram to reconnect with my tribe and my people was like, my goodness, after two years, it, it was... It was major for me and the reason i then went back was i knew that listen it's time i may not have been completely healed you know from the COVID trauma and how it hit the business but it was time right it's it's one thing to go down and it's another thing to to know when it's time to get back up even when you're not fully ready but in all fairness and, and in all honesty i went back because of my goal to grow my youtube subscribers right so i'm posting videos of course it's growing organically maybe i'm sharing you know with a few friends and all that but i needed to hit this goal and on instagram i have over forty-five thousand followers and simply because i wanted to hit this goal i had to then add this action to it right so what is the why behind what you're doing or what are the things that you need to do um you know to hit your goals and that's why i went back on instagram and then again, I still put the fact that I engaged, you know, the lawyer for debt management. I put all of that. This was by week eight. So really and truly by week eight, I think I would score myself like a 70 to 80 percent. I love the Pareto's principle. So, <laughs> you know, um, in terms of moving the needle and delegating the work. And um, by week 12, which is where we are right now, I'm going to then, you know, bring it all together. In terms of number one um, goal for me, which I shared, um, the Bank of Industry funding, we then had that the corporate affairs documentation is completed, check, annual returns I put and so on, because I mean, when we talk about the corporate affairs documentation, is your annual returns, is um, updating your director um, documentation, are you removing any directors, are you bringing any new directors, you know, all of those updates completed, fantastic catching and then you know the two banks that i wanted to start relationship with opened fantastic and then valuation completed and and also in completing my valuation i can tell you it also threw up the fact that i needed to discard some assets because what was happening in my profit and loss is that these assets that we were no longer using because we transitioned from frozen product to dry product we were still depreciating them and it was affecting my profitability. And no, 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 no. I don't want anything to affect, you know, my profitability as a business. So that also then threw it up. Um, 2021 and 2022 management accounts ready. Check. Um, 2023 profit and loss and cash flow projections ready. Check. And then I went on to say contacted auditor, contacted the tax consultant, contacted the bank of industry approved consultant to prepare um, our business plan. So these were the things I needed to do in terms of funding. Even though I haven't engaged Bank of Industry yet, but what has happened within the 12 weeks is I've then gone ahead to engage the two commercial banks for the funding. So I, I think I'll call myself a 
95 <laughs> percent in that regards i mean because it doesn't have to just be bank of industry and just before i jumped on this video i received report on my request from one of the commercial banks so i think that i'll score myself a 95 percent in that regards on that top goal so the next goal for me was my health goal hmm um, coupled with the fact that as a Christian, I engaged in spiritual fasts and all, I did lose my 4 kg. In fact, I actually lost more and dropped lower than the 70 kg desired weight um, that I wanted to weigh. Um, but I've put on a bit more, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but in the truth and the reality is that to be honest i love my body the way it is i think i'm beautiful in the way that i am i haven't gone back to the weight that i did not like but i'm just fluctuating um but the system that i created which is my money work to be honest i had to stop the works because i was losing the weight so drastically no and i don't want to look anemic or look like i'm sick you know i just want to still remain a classy sassy mompreneur right <laughs> so but i still have a problem area and that's my tummy my goodness you know it's the badge that i have three amazing children and then this tummy fat i don't know what to do with it <laughs> so that would be you know what i would look at in my next 12 weeks but right now i think i look pretty the way i am <laughs> so i give myself a hundred percent right there <laughs> ichama well done okay so that takes us to the youtube channel and what i've done in in 12 weeks so First is that I posted consistently every week. There needs to be drum roll right now. Do you know what it means? To sit and create content for 12 videos consistently. Like my heart literally skips when I remember that I have filming and I'm thinking, what do I have to say to them? What do I want to talk about today? But hey, I did it, 12 videos. And today we're sitting at almost 600 subscribers. My goodness, I feel like a champion. I'm not 100% on my goals of 1,000 subscribers, but guess what? 60% in any school in the world, that is so much above average and a pass mark. So if you're one of the almost 600 who subscribed to my channel to make me feel good, right? This is me saying thank you, thank you, and thank you. Okay, so then again, because I wanted to, you know, hit this goal, like I said, I went live on Instagram for the first time in two years. Maybe at this point, I need to put this down and let's talk about this by going live on Instagram because maybe it will look like, oh, you know, because you did it over the years, it was easy. No way. I developed, my goodness, the panic attack heightened. The heart palpitation was on another level. I'm sure that if anybody was sitting next to me, they would hear my heart beating because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what was going to happen on online. You know, I didn't know, you know, the trolls, the bullies. Yes, it worried me. But all I knew was that at 8 p.m. on the 1st of January, 2023, I was going to click the live button. So I remember I sat on this, on this, my <laughs> same, you know, couch. And I clicked the live button. I realized that Instagram now has a new feature where you could just see yourself like a private feature before you then click the public audience. <laughs> All in preparation, you know. And um, and I remember going live and disabling the comments. Oh no, my mental health is critical to me. <laughs> I need to protect my energy. You know, my circle, my space. So I, I disabled comments and I just broke down in tears. You would, you would think that I then started talking. No, it was so emotional, you know, reconnecting with my tribe. It was so emotional, you know, coming to do this again. And I literally cried for, <laughs> to be honest, I think for the first 15 minutes. I had nothing to say or I didn't know what to say. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. So if you're listening to me today, this, this will be a cue, you know, to do it afraid, right? Don't worry about how it's going to turn out. Don't focus on excellence. Don't focus on the outcomes, like focus on your goal, focus on what you want to do and just do it. Like Nike will say, just do it. And I told them why I disabled comments. And I said to them, I don't know that I'm going to stay here for long, but I just wanted to show up because I had promised myself. It was a promise that I made myself that I was going to show up. But guess what? I ended up spending, I think, 45 minutes to another hour, you know, just rambling through tears. 
and the support I got on that video. And you would ask, how did I see it if I disabled comments? Um, so I think there's a question or something tag or something. I don't know. So, you know, but I then at some point put it up and people were cheering me on. Like, hey, how about that? Wow. <laughs> But I couldn't even, you know, share the video. So it's like, if you weren't live on that video, you weren't going to see anything. But that was how I started. And um, every day from that day, except for one week, I didn't go live on Sunday. I have shown up not knowing um, the how, not knowing what to expect. The very next week, the same thing. I disabled comments. I didn't also share the video for anybody to see afterwards. But I think that by the third week, you know, maybe I had now grown some guts. <laughs> And some confidence, you know, and I remember I started again with comments disabled, but I remember just saying, listen, I want to see and hear people. I want to connect. I'm a connector. I love to connect, you know, and that was it. And I, I allowed the comments to roll and there were beautiful comments, you know, and people share with me how I had impacted their lives over the years and how they had missed me. And I'm thinking, this is what you could have missed if you didn't show up live again, right? And, um, but what that also did for me, you know, was to be honest, I was focused on my goal to reach a thousand subscribers in 12 weeks. It's my Y 1000. So you want to start a YouTube channel and they tell you that how to monetize your channel is when you have a thousand subscribers and you know, 4,000 watch hours and all of that. That's how I set that goal. Not because I care about a thousand subscribers, not because, you know, I care whether it's five or 10. All I know is that if you remember when I read out my dream life to you, that I'm someday going to have a hundred thousand um, subscribers, a positive community you know, on, on, on YouTube, that's actually what I care about. I don't care about a thousand today or 2000 tomorrow, or you know what I'm trying to say. I just know it's going to happen someday. It's my dream life. And reading those comments, you know, from people who had shared about how I had impacted their lives over the years and how, you know, I had 1 million gazillion people saying, oh, I was praying for you when I was looking for you and I didn't find you. And I can tell you that I know that those prayers probably were what kept me in, uh, in, you know, in relation with my own prayers as well that kept me in those dark years that I had talked about earlier. on. And yeah, I realized I didn't care about a thousand subscribers anymore. I cared about service. I cared about impacting. I cared about just churning out content that made sense. And the reason, you know, for the 1,000 subscribers, like I mentioned earlier, is monetization, right? But I have this other business that's Leap to Limitless Global, where the YouTube channel actually falls under. The reason um, we're using my personal name and not the business name is because I'm faith-based. My business is not faith-based and I would always throw in, you know, the Bible verses and all that. I'm a Christian and I've not pretended about it. I'm a, I'm a faith-based woman. You know, so I didn't want that conflict between, you know, um, so people of other faith wanting the services of my business, Lip to Limitless Global, and then thinking, you know, I just didn't want that conflict. That's why I then started the YouTube channel on my name, right? So if it's all about monetization and growing, then that means that my focus should be on growing my business, Lip to Limitless Global, and not on a thousand subscribers. The last four weeks as well, one day I got to work and at that time I'm still focused on this, my 1,000 subscribers. And I knew that I had an email list of almost 10,000 people sitting pretty in my email list who received my newsletters. Hey Gemma, how about you reach out to them? And that's exactly what I did. So I sent the first email and I just talked. Um, I remember my sister and my daughter who are you know um, in my email list then sent me a message and said there was something about that email i'm thinking what are they talking about i just sat at work and in one hour i just sent an email to you know about ten thousand people and that was it and I, and when i sent that first email you know i remember typing at the bottom of the email and i said till whenever i have the courage and the guts or feel like sending you an email i'm signing out i typed that and i said no ijoma in this year, you want to be imperfectly consistent. So I wiped that last line and I said, until I come your way next week, right? And I was going to send them an email a week later. But something about that email and what my, you know, sister and my daughter and a few others said about the email spurred me to action the very next day. I found myself on my laptop again and I sent them an email. I can tell you that from that day, I've literally sent out an email every day, literally. 
like at least four times in the week i've sent an email so that goal of a thousand subscribers spurred me right to go back on instagram after two years spurred me to send an email to my email list and my goodness the encomiums and i shared the link to this youtube channel and the growth to the almost 600 subscribers has come from that singular action of every time I upload a video, you know, I talk about it in the email. So I shared the previous videos with them and I have a video right now that has almost a thousand views within 12 weeks. Like how? Right. But that goal um, driven by my actions and my dream has gotten me here. That is how I have fared in the last 12 weeks. And I think that if I had to score myself, because maybe if I leave it to you, you will score me a 10%. And no, I, I love myself so much. <laughs> and I'll score myself. I think that, to be honest, I'll score myself a 95% in my last 12 weeks. And that takes us to the next 12 weeks. My goals haven't changed, literally speaking. I talk about shifting the goalpost. So we haven't gotten the funding yet. Yes, we've sent out all the um, facility requests and all of that. And we haven't gotten our bank of industry funding, which of course, you know, is lesser interest rates for business owners. You know, I'm here talking to business owners and entrepreneurs, right? So that goal still comes on my next 12 weeks goal right and um the next one of course i still want to be a classy saucy mompreneur talking to you so even though the goal now is not about uh, losing 4 kg plus again god my goodness it's now about the belly fat and i to be honest don't know how i'm going to do it but i've written that down that I'm going to at least w take walks, you know, four times a week, um, 6,000 steps, which is what I normally will do within an hour. And I would add tummy exercises. Pray for me. That's all I can say. Then, of course, the next goal, which I've then moved from grow my YouTube subscribers to grow my leap to limitless business. <laughs> We're here talking about wealth creation. We're here talking about business. And business is all about exchanging value for money. So for me is growing my lip to limitless business. Now, how would I grow it? I need an audience. I need people to know what I'm talking about. I need that people to know that, oh, this lady knows what she's talking about and what she's teaching, right? So that takes me to consistently uploading weekly YouTube videos. So now I'm not uploading weekly videos because I want to grow my subscribers. I'm doing it because... I want to impact. I want to serve. Um, not everybody would, you know, either buy my programs or buy my books or buy my resources, but my freebies, which of course I'm going to still put the link um, in the description box. The free Limitless Wealth Creation Blueprint is free. Somebody will download it, will get served, will be impacted to take action. Someone will listen to this video and do something with their lives. And, you know, maybe say five years from now, somebody will see me and say, you remember that video that you posted? This was what it made me to do. And that would feel fulfilled right towards you know impacting lives and um higher on operations executive is actually the second thing on on my list you know um, that i have to do to grow my business lip to limitless global and i put there i said already interviewed well the beautiful thing is that she's sitting here today and her name is aramide and today's the end of the 12 weeks so i haven't even gotten into the next 12 weeks but because i knew where i was going i knew the actions even though i hadn't written it down to take when you set goals, when the opportunities come up, you're able to see it. She came to interview for an, a completely different role at Boobers Foods. And by the time we were done, I said, I think I have a role for you. Well, she's sitting here, sitting pretty, assisting me today, you know, um, in the, with the videos and all of that. So I'm already on the, on the go for my next 12 weeks. And the third thing I put down is to sell my online programs to hit my money goals. That's what... I'm about in the next 12 weeks. So first is I still need debt funding for my manufacturing business, Boobest Foods Limited. I still need to remain a classy, sassy mompreneur who comes to serve you. So I have to find a way to talk in the Tommy exercises so that, you know, I'm as fabulous as ever. And then the third thing for me is to grow my Live to Limitless business. I know that as always, this video has been impactful if it has please share like 
click the subscribe button and until next time keep thriving and remember that your dreams are absolutely valid god bless you